Hello, my name is Eloise. We have Gerard and Sigra here again today to help us. Hi there, you two. Oh, hi. Hi, is it? You guys seem to be having a lot of fun. What are you busy with? We're busy with the task you gave us last lesson. It's really a lot of fun once you get into it, eh? Well, I'm really glad that you enjoyed doing it, especially since we'll be using the same geometric sequence in today's lesson. What is today's lesson? We are going to look at the nth term of a sequence. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify and describe geometric patterns, predict how the pattern will continue, and find a formula for the nth term of a sequence. In the task of the last lesson, we asked you to find at least two ways to describe the patterns in this geometric sequence. You've discovered the coolest things about this pattern. Okay, go ahead. Let's see what you've come up with. In the first diagram, you realize that all four squares are blue. In the next diagram, it seems the blue squares have been pushed out to make space for the cream one. Yeah. But the blue squares seem to want to be right next to each other. More of them need to be added to completely surround the cream square in the middle. So more squares are added to make it eight blue squares. In the third picture, three more cream squares have been added to the middle. And it seems the blue squares are once again pushed out. In order to surround the cream squares, another four blue squares must be added. This gives us a total of... Twelve. From here we can see that four blue squares are added every time. So we predicted that the next picture would have twelve plus four, making it sixteen. We checked this by counting the number of blue squares in the next picture. And our prediction was right. There are 16 blue squares. Yeah. And see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So if you continue in the next diagram, we'd see that it'll be 16 plus 4, which gives us 20. That's a good observation. Thanks, but we haven't figured out how many cream squares there'll be yet. Well, why don't we have a look at that together then? Cool. Well, in the first picture, we see that there are no cream squares. In the second picture, there's one cream square. In the third diagram, there's one plus three, which makes it four cream squares. Yeah, but I don't see where you're going with this. Well, she's only on the third number. I think the pattern will become a bit more obvious once we've done the next one. Sigra, can you do the next one for us? In the next diagram, it's going to be 1 plus 3 plus 5. That will give us 9. In the last diagram, we've got 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus seven, which will give us 16 cream squares. That's right. You've chosen an interesting way of looking at the pattern, Sigra. Can you describe what changes in the pattern each time? Well, the number of cream squares that are added is a sequence of odd numbers starting at one. You can see it yourself. You can. Sigra is right. Let me show you. First, one square was added. Then we added these three squares. And then we added five more squares here. So the next picture needs to have seven cream squares added. That will be one plus three plus five plus seven, which is 16. We already worked out that there will be 20 blue squares as well. So we get a pattern that will look like this. Good thinking there, Sigra. Your pattern has worked very well. Now, did you discover anything else about this pattern? Well, yes. In the beginning, we only used one pattern for the diagram. I didn't think it was important to separate the blue and the cream squares. You know, to me, they were only squares with a blue border for decoration. 
Okay, why don't you explain to us what you did? I looked at how many small squares made up a big square in each case. And then I saw that the length of each big square was increased by each small square that was added. Can you show us what you mean? The first picture has four squares, two on each side. Two times two equals four. The next one has three down and three across, which is three times three, which is equal to nine. The next one has four and four, which is 16. Four times four is 16. And I predicted that the next pattern would be five and five. And I was right. It's 25 blocks altogether. Five and five. So you see the pattern that I saw was two times two, three times three, four times four, and five times five. That means in the next diagram, there will be six squares on each length. What bothered me though, is that a four unit square is a weird place to start. They could have started with one small square instead of a unit of four. So I added that in the beginning of the sequence. This is wonderful. You have extended the pattern at the beginning and at the end of it. And your pattern works. The length of each side of the diagram is one square's length more for each diagram. Now let's compare your patterns to each other. Now if I refer to say picture three, this will be the same picture for you both. Now I want you to look at what you have found. You found different ways of describing the same pattern. Both ways are correct. And there are still other ways to describe the pattern. If you have made this pattern for yourself, see how many other ways you can find to describe the patterns in these squares. Now that you have described the pattern, can you use it to predict what the tenth pattern in the sequence will look like? Okay, I'll do the blue and cream ones. You can do the other ones, Gerard. Cool. I'm going to look at the blue squares first. This first picture doesn't fit my pattern very well. Picture 2 has four blue squares. Picture 3 will have four plus four blue squares. I know, I could say that this is two times four. Picture 4 will have three times four blue squares. Picture five will be four times four. Picture six will be five times four. I reckon that will mean that picture 10 will have nine times four blue squares. That's 36. That's looking good. Now what about the cream squares? Well, the first picture doesn't fit my pattern again. After that, I know I must add up the odd numbers. I think that I'll have to do pictures 7, 8 and 9 first before I get to the 10th diagram. That method will work for the 10th picture, but it would take ages. Imagine using this method if I asked you to find the 20th picture. What do you think, Gerard? Well, let's look at the cream squares that Sigra has found in each picture. For the first two, there's zero and then one, then four, then nine, then 16. They're all squared numbers. Surely that can help us. Hey, that's brilliant. Let's write that in. This is two squared. This is three squared. And this is four squared. But what do I put here for the first three pictures? 
Maybe you should think in terms of what squared will give you zero. That's easy. Naught squared is naught. So I'll write here, naught squared, naught squared, and one squared. Great, that fits the pattern. Don't worry about the zero squared being there twice at the beginning of the pattern. So what number must we square for the cream squares in the tenth pattern? Will it be ten squared? I don't think so. In the fourth picture, it's two squared. And in the fifth picture, it's three squared. That means we're squaring by a number that is two less than the picture number. Oh, I see what you mean. So the tenth picture will be eight squared, which is 64. So in total, it will be 36 plus 64, which will give us 100. Let me check that against my pattern. I'll use the total amount of squares. So in my 10th pattern, it will be 10 times 10 squares, which equal 100, the same amount. That's a useful observation. What you often find with geometric patterns is that there are several ways to describe them, but the numbers that you use end up being the same. Now you are ready for the next step in this patterning process. Can you tell me how many squares will be in the nth diagram? N stands for the number of any diagram. Let's start with the cream squares. The number of squares was 2 less than the picture number and then it was squared. So if the picture number is N, then the number of squares on one side of the square will be N minus 2. Then we square that and get N minus 2 all squared. Excellent, Sigra. This is the picture number. Then we subtract 2 and then square that whole number. Now what about the blue squares? In the 10th picture, it will be 9 times 4. So in the nth picture, it should be n times 4. I don't think that's right. Pretty close though. You need a number that is 1 less than n n minus 1. So whatever number n stands for, I'll minus by 1 first and then multiply by 4. So let's look at what we have now. We have found the general term of the pattern in the cream squares n minus 2 all squared. Then we found the general pattern for the blue squares n minus 1 times 4. So now we can say that the nth term is n minus 2 all squared cream squares plus n minus 1 times 4 blue squares. This equation separates cream and blue squares but have a look here. I can simplify this equation to get n squared minus 2n minus 2n plus 4 plus 4n minus 4. And that is just n squared. If we take n to be the number of squares on each length of a diagram the way Gerard did, then our general or nth term will be n squared. So although we found different general rules based on different pattern strategies, we came to the same answers in the end. Isn't it cool how it works out such a simple answer in the end? And that you can get all these different number patterns from the blocks. That's pretty cool too. I'm glad you two enjoyed finding these patterns and I hope that everyone watching has found this as fascinating as we have. Now here is a task that involves finding the nth term in a number sequence. Complete the given number sequence and then find the nth term. In our next lesson, we need to explore the general formula using an nth term in a pattern. Until then, from me, Sigra and Gerard, see you next time. Bye-bye.
Thank <laughs> you.